Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me at an Electrify America station where we've spoken a lot about DC fast charging in America, around the world, and that's only increasing into next year. So I, I wanna kind of finish up on a topic that we've been covering throughout the second half of 2022, which has been Electrify America sort of ripping out their old stations and installing the new hardware that they co-developed. I've used this hardware now on multiple road trips. I think I have it figured out. There's some huge pros, huge cons, all the way down to bricking vehicles. Um, it's getting a little bit crazy and uh, sort of unfortunately as expected. So I came over here to my local station. This was one of the first stations that was upgraded from the older ABB units to these newer BTC units. I'm gonna walk you through the hardware, talk about the rollout, and then of course tell you some of the pros and cons of Electrify America's plan to update their network just a few years in. <laughs> So you join me here in Loveland, Colorado. Take a look at this unbelievably wonderful parking job this ID4 did. Don't know what is going on with that, but thankfully these new units actually have really long cables. So I was able to roll up in the Rivian. This one actually just completed charging. I just heard the contactors go and now it's collecting idle fees. ID4 owners, please stop full charging your cars and please stop <laughs> parking like this. What the heck? It's just an unbelievable amount of ID4 owners always charging to full. I don't understand. Um, we're here charging up the Rivian. Super long cables on these. Love that. Really easy to get everywhere. There are downsides to long cables and that has to do with cold weather. It's below 30 degrees out right now. And so wrangling this thing over to the truck certainly is a hardship, but that's just the cabling that we're dealing with in today's market. So walk with me over this way. And I wanna start with, why are we even talking about new stations? For some of you who may not know, previously Electrify America, when they first launched, they were tasked with putting in a DC fast charging network, of course, as a punishment uh, from Dieselgate. That's how it all started. And part of that punishment was you have to build out a network of zero emission vehicle charging. And well, they sort of had to build a ton of stations in a really short period of time. And honestly, it, it sounds really good on paper, but it didn't work out that way or that well in reality. You see, the problem was no one was making very high quality DC fast chargers, especially in large quantities. So Electrify America had to go and buy charging hardware from four different manufacturers, FSEC, ABB, BTC Power, and Signet. Those were the four, that, the four initial launch partners. Of course, that's really difficult. You have to manage technical expertise on all four different types of chargers. Each one's get different software updates. Each one's interact with cars a little bit differently. And it just sort of turned out to be a, a little bit of a total disaster early on. We had good hardware, bad hardware, and it was very regional specific. So uh, early on, I wanna say this is two years ago now, Electrify America decided to I don't know the details in the situation, but pretty much end their contract with FSEC. And by end their contract, I mean rip out all the stations and replace, I believe, the majority of them with the newer Signet units. And that was really a disaster of a situation. They pretty much pulled down the all, all of the I-95 corridor in one go. I made a whole video about it. Actually, before Out of Spec Reviews was even a thing, this was on Out of Spec Motoring, I believe. And um, yeah, really a disaster. People were stranded. They just turned off all the stations before they started ripping them down. It was Memorial Day weekend, I believe. And you could just be like, oh, the forward thinking here, people are using the network. You could tell they weren't thinking from a driver's mindset. So, okay, early issues on, or issues early on, to be forgiven, you know, we're sort of past that. Then we get to the situation later on where more and more people are buying electric cars. You have ID4s everywhere that come with free charging. Now, I'm not typically a fan of automakers giving away free charging because you run into situations like this. People come, they charge their car to 100%, and it's still sitting here with no one in sight, just clogging a charger, which is really unfortunate. And this is something that's happening all the time. What's up, Alyssa? Clogging, actually, too. Technically. Yeah, technically clogging, too. <laughs> I know, I just don't know. <laughs> but this is happening far too often and it's far too common and it's really quite a situation. That's for another video. We're talking hardware. 
Uh, so with this heavy use and with a really hot summer this summer, we noticed that the whole network started to crumble down a little bit. And uh, I don't want to paint a picture where it was like the worst thing on the planet because I took a lot of road trips this summer. We were still able to get to our destinations. We would just run up to chargers and we would have them derate to 35 kilowatts. We would run up to chargers and half of the stalls would be down or more. And this was really not the experience anyone wants. And you guys know me, when I roll up to a charging station and it works, I always post about it. When it doesn't work, I always post about it. Make sure to post especially when it doesn't work because I think that's the only way to drive the industry forward. And it was really a disaster. So I think what Electrify America is doing, and they claim this, but let's hope it's all legit. I don't know. Um, they wanted to improve the network's reliability. That's all we can hope that we, we hope they wanna do that. And what they started doing was actually ripping out the ABB units, the early ones, which actually is this charger right here. This is just a dispenser. The actual chargers are in there, but you guys get the idea. Um, these ABB units seem to be really sensitive to the hot temperatures. They tend to work pretty well in the cold in my experience. And lots of bugs, screens failing, internals on the actual dispensers failing, cable cooling failing, cable temperature sensors failing, chargers breaking, and I guess Electrify America sort of had enough and decided to say, hey, we, we have to replace these chargers. So here we are for round two of the replacement. And we've actually covered that entire process here at this location where the ABB chargers were ripped out of the ground and replaced with this BTC installation. And I'm going to talk about the specific hardware, this one in just a moment, because you can get BTC or SK Signet uh, attached to these dispensers. We have BTC here. And you know, with ABBs getting ripped out, it was a bit of a shame because I don't know if that was just a lack of maintenance on EA side, if it was a lack of part supply from uh, ABB side, but what it shows me is we're putting in a lot of DC fast charging infrastructure very quickly and nothing has proven to last. And I hate to sound like a Tesla fanboy, except for superchargers. That's the only hardware in America that's proven to just run and run and run. Save for some of the flow chargers we've seen in Canada seem to do pretty well. And the really early EVgo box 50 kilowatt ones, those 100 amp, the early ones, those seem to just work in many cases, not all cases. But none of this new hardware seems to be lasting more than a couple years. So really, I think a major red flag, huge problem going on here. So Electrify America decided to work on co-developing with BTC and SK Signet their third generation charger, which is these right here. And these are just the dispensers, of course, and the actual hardware is in there. And the reason they're sort of third generation chargers is just because of the actual DC, AC to DC charging equipment in the cabinets. These are load managed and balanced, which is really nice as well. I think it's a great way to utilize more of your charging capacity. If you haven't yet, take a listen to the recent out of spec podcast episode. It's actually going up this weekend as well. And we talk about different strategies of load management from individual chargers to entire DC microgrids for sites. Really cool stuff, but weigh the pros and cons. Cost plays a lot, a big factor of this. And so this is the new hardware and that's what we're talking about. And there's two different versions of this new hardware. You can have the entire BTC vertical integration, which all of these dispensers are, I believe, built by BTC. What's up, Alyssa? Your hand is so close to the bird poo. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> she just made a face. I was like, what's going on? Okay. So these are, I believe, all built by BTC. But the actual chargers, which if you can actually just peek in right through here because you can see. This is where all the hard work is done in these types of situations. And you can see there's extra room for this to be built out even more. Um, I believe we have two or three BTC cabinets. I believe three of them. So you have the two manufacturers of charging hardware, SK Signet and BTC Power. And both of those have a little bit of a load distributing sharing uh, characteristic that's slightly different, which we actually haven't fully tested yet. So we need to do that. But let's talk about how the rollout's going of these. So we've seen many stations going offline now for the last five months, four or five months, something like that, where these are getting ripped out of the ground. They're putting in the new ones. Now, why is this one here? If you come around to the front with me, you'll see um, pretty much every station that's had a Chatamo uh, dispenser at EA has decided to leave 
the Chatamo, which is great. You guys know I own an early leaf. It makes my life a little bit better. It makes other people who rely on the Chatamo plugs life leader. You wouldn't uh, better, but we know for sure that EA isn't installing any more Chatamo stations at their new sites outside of California. At least they're not removing them. But it does look a little weird having this one old charger and then the new ones next to it. Ah, this Rivian's at 99%. Nice Tesla. It looks like ours. I thought it was ours. And um, so reliability. So let's talk about A, the installation process, then reliability. We've seen them pull chargers offline on major corridors to upgrade these stations. Now, typically, we, we actually noticed some issues early on, and I think it's getting a little bit better. We noticed where uh, plug share would show, hey, starting on this day, construction's gonna start, don't rely on this charger. Great, okay. Uh, on their app, even after they were offline, occasionally they would show as online and working. And we actually made a video on that. Alyssa rolled up here to this station the day that they pulled it offline, needing to charge our R1T and uh, showed up to a dead station. So there needs to be some work there. And just recently, a major on the major holiday weekend, um, there was a corridor in Texas that was pulled offline for upgrades. So I think they're also not totally fully understanding when people need to heavily utilize the network and they're pulling them offline for upgrades at the wrong time, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, there's so many ways around this as well. You could put in mobile charging installations. There's so many things they could do to make the EV driver experience better. There could be signage recommending you to another nearby site. For example, Tesla has this wonderful 18 wheeler, not to go on about Tesla, that rolls up with a megawatt hour battery pack and superchargers on the side, and it can just plug right into your grid connection. So I guess I'm a bit disappointed when they pull a station offline that they just leave everyone stranded for that period of time. But let's say you get through that four or eight week period of time and the new stations are in. How does that process go? What's it like? And so far it's been honestly overall very positive. These new stations have a bit of an odd characteristic to almost over boost the charging power though. So when we came here with the Lucid Air, we got 351 kilowatts worth of charging power. When we came here with the Hummer EV, we got 365 kilowatts worth of charging power, more than it's rated for, of course. On, it's really a 360 kilowatt charger. Um, but occasionally we'll pull in here with an ID4, for example, and get 190. It's almost like the chargers for a brief period of time give more than what the car is asking for, which is A, scary, yes. And it shouldn't be that way because all the car is doing is saying, hey, give me this much. The charger is not pushing the power, the car is pulling the power in a sense. We've noticed though some major issues, especially with Rivians on these at around 70% state of charge. And we just took a road trip and it bricked our truck twice where the chargers, and this is all from Rivian engineers, their messaging to me, they pulled the logs on my truck. They said the chargers were not delivering the power that the truck was asking for. It would go more than what the truck was asking for. It would go less than the truck was asking for. And this dirty power more or less happened in a very short period of time. And the contactors blew open on the truck and it faulted out. And that's really a shame. Same thing, same station down in Denver happened with an Audi e-tron GT. So now it's happening within Volkswagen Group cars as well, because J1 platform is very sensitive to this. We've also noticed this on Taycan as well. So I'm not convinced that the new chargers are really any bit, any more reliable than the old chargers. Certainly they're giving us a lot of power, which is awesome. I've also seen many of these offline already, just down in Lakewood, in, uh, right off I-70 going up into the mountains, a station I use very often, especially when towing. I go down there, top up a little bit just to get up in the mountains when I'm towing with the Rivian. And a brand new install, only a couple weeks old, site's already down, screen's black, doesn't work at all. I'm not convinced at this moment that this huge expense of upgrading the chargers is gonna do anything for increased reliability. A bit of a shame in my opinion, and we're gonna keep an eye on it. We're gonna keep road tripping. I always let you know my experiences when I roll up to a charger and they're good or bad, of course. Uh, so there you go. The new chargers output a lot of power, really like the long cable just for ease of <laughs> charging cars when, when there's a mess. Um, and then, uh, you know, we'll see how, how it works out. I think a lot of it's just software controls that can be worked on over time. Hopefully they did their, their research and they did their R&D and these things will stay in the ground for years to come. Curious what your experience is with these new units, but I would say overall, it's quite a hassle to get them in the ground. 
I wonder what the over under is in just maintaining old equipment rather than putting new ones in because uh, you certainly have to take your site offline for a period of time. They certainly give the juice. They got the juice, but uh, sometimes they got a little bit too much juice, which is a bit of a shame. And hopefully that will get corrected over time with software. Uh, I think they visually look great. Overall, I don't know, 50-50. Alyssa, your opinions on the new hardware? You've used it. Um, I think they're going in the right direction, but I don't think it's quite there yet. So hopefully it will be there. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's a total toss up. We've had issues and we've also had good experiences, but some of our same with the old units as well. So. Yes, some of our best charging sessions have been on these units. And I think it might be because they just give a little bit more than the car is asking for. <laughs> so there you have it the new ea units curious what your experience is in the comments ea seriously we hate rolling up to charging stations and seeing them offline uh, i'd like to believe you guys feel the same way i don't know why charging has to be so hard we're going to keep making videos like this saying good and bad experiences this experience with the rivian worked great this site's getting a lot of throughput we've rolled up here had to wait in lines nothing has been done to station expansion again a topic for another day so thanks so much for watching another out of spec reviews video. And um, we have a lot of charging topics to get into. I'm touring the world throughout 2023 to find the coolest charging stations to bring to you. So if you have any suggestions, leave them below. See you in another one soon. Bye-bye.